I'm Larissa Gil Sanuesa, Young Adult Advocacy Coordinator, and I'm here with Jose Was, who is our Legislative Manager for Criminal Justice. Today, we'll be talking about the crises of racism, police brutality, and the militarization of the police. Jose will talk to us about the role that national legislation can play in addressing these crises and why it is crucial that we lobby our members of Congress for passage of such legislation. On November 14th, there will be over 500 people attending FCNL's annual meeting and lobby day to do just that. I'm particularly excited about this conversation because FCNL's young adult community has been focused on this issue for a long time. They've been lobbying, they've been protesting, and young advocates around the country have helped make police violence the central issue of our time. So if you haven't registered for the meeting and our lobby day, you can still do that at fcnl.org slash annual meeting. All right, let's get started with some questions. Jose, how is national legislation going to help the country address the epidemic of police violence, police brutality, militarization of the police in black communities in our country. Thanks, Larissa. Just days after the most consequential election of our lifetimes, we will gather virtually lobby Congress for strong action to address police brutality, the militarization of, of the police, and legislation that could begin to transform the practice of policing in this country. The first thing I would say, which you already know, is Congress won't act unless they hear our voices. And to your question, why does national legislation matter? There are 18,000 police jurisdictions in the United States. There's really, there's really important work, really important progress already being made in local cities and counties and states across the country. But we need national legislation to insist that there be consistent national standards in all of these jurisdictions. This is why we need national legislation to make sure every jurisdiction bans chokeholds and so much more. In November, we will be lobbying Congress to pass a George Floyd Justice in Policing Act. Or legislation with the same essential points. While this legislation does not do everything that is, that is needed, it takes an important step forward. We supported passage of the, of the Justice in Policing Act, H.R. 7120, in the House. Now we are urging the Senate to pass the, the companion bill in the Senate, S3912, or legislation with the same provisions. Thank you, Jose. Who supports this legislation? FCNL was proud to stand with the Leadership Conference on Civil and Human Rights as they put forth a strong set of policy changes needed to begin to address the problems. Many of these recommendations were incorporated into H.R. 7120, the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act, that was originally developed by the Congressional Black Caucus. How does this work in Washington fit into the broader movement to defund the police, confront police brutality, and confront structural racism? The municipal and state movement to take funding away from the police and put it into community service, social work, etc., is some of the most effective work going on right now. And in some cases where the police are so broken, tearing them down and building, that, and building an entirely new structure may be what is needed. Real change is happening at the local level. Most of the funding for local police comes from local jurisdictions. And frankly, those local governments is where the change in allocation of resources needs to happen. And we are inspired by what some local governments are doing. But that is hard, hard work as well. And it will take consistent community action to, do, to make that change. At the federal level, we believe passage of, the, of federal legislation that will take the following steps would be, would be a vital complement to the essential work going on at the local level, such as prohibiting federal, state, and local law enforcement from racial, religious, and discriminatory political profiling, mandates training and requires data collection to that respect, 
raises the use of force standard to prevent police officers from using lethal force unless all non-lethal methods have been exhausted. Requires the use of de-escalation techniques. Bans chokeholds and no-knock warrants. Also conditions law enforcement funding for state and local governments to ban both chokeholds and no-knock warrants. And limits the transfer of military-grade equipment, the Tendivity Program, to state and local law enforcement. Congress needs to act to insist that every jurisdiction in the country follow these standards at a minimum. We have much work to do, and this legislation is only a first step in addressing fatal racist police killings in this country. Thanks, Jose. So the million dollar question, will this legislation pass in 2020? We don't know. The House has passed the George Floyd Justice Policing Act. The Senate has attempted to pass a much weaker bill known as the Justice Act, which does not meet the needs of the moment contains weak provisions and commissions. We do not believe this legislation is sufficient and furthermore fear that passage of this bill would derail efforts to get effective legislation passed. Without public pressure, the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act will have no chance of passage in 2020. And without public pressure in 2020, the bill will also not win passage in 2021. <clears throat> Please attend FCNL's virtual annual meeting and lobby day to press Congress right after the elections to take action to address racist political brutality. And thank you for all you do.